Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another review. And you, you're probably going to be saying, and I'm saying this now because I haven't posted in a while. Probably going to, you're probably going to be saying, well, where's, a, where have all your videos been? Well, because I've been currently focusing on my Jurassic Park: Return of the Dinosaurs series, and I've been wanting to film a epi a episode, and that's why I've got. Quite, quite a lot of things in a box currently. However, the new shooting location that I'm wanting to do, which is the park here, my parents have not taken me to yet. And I believe I asked them on a Friday. And I believe that Friday was the one before this week. I, actually, I think it was even further. So maybe two whole weeks since I... Since I've asked to do it, and I still have not been able to. So yeah, I'm sorry I've kept you guys waiting, cause I'm real. I've really been hoping that I will be able to go, and film the episode, but I've just started school, so now it's gonna be even even ugh, even more difficult. But to take out my boredom, since I can't film a new episode currently, I am going to be doing another review. And this is for the second Massive Biters figure. This is the Tarbosaurus. Or at least the second one that I've bought. And I gotta say, I do like it. Like, it's a good figure. But it's a, it, it's a bit small. Like, it, it's definitely not, not good when it comes to size. And I'll actually show you comparisons later. So the first thing that does stand out to me about this figure is all the black spikes running down. Fortunately, the, sp the black stops, like, here. So you get some of these spikes that just are aren't painted. And you know, another thing that's unpainted, and I'm saying this because the Allosaurus, Metricanthosaurus, Carnotaurus, T-Rex, Albertosaurus, basically almost everything else there's only a few figures I can think of that haven't gotten this and that's probably the Baryonyx they didn't bother to paint the feet or like the the claws on the feet why because they they've done that for most of their other figures and these claws are definitely big enough that they could I don't know I guess I guess Mattel is just being a bit cheap when it comes to this figure. I mean, st I could still undersee... I... Ugh, undersee? Wow. <laughs> I could still see why they're not painting... Not painting the nails, of course. But why not the claws on the feet? Like, that. that that's just... That's just weird and cheap. However, as far as the head goes, and I'm showing you the head here, it actually looks really good. I, I really I really like the head. Especially that bottom jaw, which you're probably not even able to see it. But it's got so much detail. Like, this, I think, beats out the Albertosaurus and how much detail it had. Because you just get all this small little detail. And when you touch this thing, you really feel all that detail. So, it feels a lot like a real reptile. However, the body is kind of, ugh, on detailing. I mean, you do get, like, all these fine little scales. You get the ribs kind of showing through. You get muscles on the legs. You get the scales on the feet, which for some reason kind of go up higher than they usually do. And I don't know why, but... When I was fiddling around with this guy in the box and I was trying to get him out without breaking the strands, because I've been able to slip figures through the bands that were holding them in and it didn't damage it at all, I noticed that for some reason, and you can see these holes on the bottom of his feet, normally those holes aren't actually attached to anything, but this time, they actually had these like weird things that pegged into the feet and it was holding the figure down and it, it was kind of hard to get out actually like sl like slipping it through the strands like that was no problem like the first one at least 
But because I was unable to move that leg right there, it was, I had to get the scissors to get it out. And I had to really pull it. I had to like, I had to damage the box actually to do it. So as far as a collector goes who wants to review it, like, you know, review it and then put it back in the box, if you would want to do this, the box isn't going to look too good afterwards. Uh, but me, that could just be because I didn't do I didn't do it the right way. But then again, he is the only one that I've seen that on. Like, yeah, I'm checking right now. T-Rex actually has the same holes. And he didn't have any pegs like holding him down. The Carnotaurus didn't have that. All the Roarivores didn't have that. Rexy didn't have that. I, I, it's, it's just, I, I'm not sure why they did it. I don't know. But another weird thing about this figure, and I'm pointing out the negatives first because there, there are quite a few of them. You get this lovely red color, but then it for some reason just stops and they didn't go ahead and do even this bit of the underbelly and I noticed this when I was trying to film this earlier but let me get it the Albertosaurus has this tan coloration but it stops a bit here on the neck and then it doesn't go on to the body at all so I'd say as far as paint goes, even though the Albertosaurus actually has his toes painted. Oh no, actually I'd say he's worse now that I think about it because he, like the Tarbosaurus, has all this black and it runs down all the way to like here. So it's actually pretty consistent. Whereas the Albertosaurus, you can see the brown paint stops right here and it doesn't even go down to the tail. Which I definitely could have done. Like, these are just choices of Mattel. And, and I, I'm saying this here because seems like the figures that they've been giving us lately have actually been getting worse. They have, for some reason, are just saving pennies by not putting enough paint on. But if if I can go ahead and get over that, I will say the Tarbosaurus' paint job does look pretty good. Like, he's covered in a, a gray... And it's a very neutral gray. It's got all these black stripes running down and the jaw, it's it's red and it really just it really just brightens the figure up. Like he doesn't really have too many noticeable details besides that red jaw. And I, I once again, I love the head, especially from the front. Like it's got a unique look. It looks similar to T-Rex, but it's got enough different features and of course I'll show that off I'll show off that comparison later but just like the Sarcosuchus now we're going to show you off the action feature see you move the tail and it moves the head but you push this button and it moves the jaw however if you do it just right you get a minute like you get a bit where that jaw actually closes up all the way and you can see the button still down so it's basically stuck and that's really good because that kind of repli replicates the jaw locking mechanism that Tarbosaurus actually had in real life so that is cool I really like how that's featured and it's not actually fully stuck you see there you go all you really need to do like if, if you're messing around with these, like if you got a kid that's playing with these, all he really has to do is swing this against whatever dinosaur he's having it fight, and then the jaw will just pop back open. Which is really also good for filmmakers like me. Because of course, I don't really want the jaw to get stuck. And then it just being unresponsive. Whereas this way, I could like have it headbutt something, then that jaw will just, will just fall open. So that's really good. The legs look a bit short. Like, I, I think it's because he has such a huge body. But the legs look kind of small. 
Like, is this just me, or do these legs look kind of small? It also looks kind of metallic on camera. Like, the gray. It's, it's much shinier on camera than it is in real life. You got the nice scales that... Uh, man. That run up the foot. However, it kind of continues onto the ankles. However, this dinosaur has the feature where you can actually... Yeah. You can actually move the feet. You can basically break the ankles to help it stand. However, but once again, because of those things that were keeping it down in the box, the foot kind of, like you see I've got it even now, but it really wants to go a bit sideways. So sometimes when I have it displayed, the foot actually looks a bit crooked. Like, it's actually just out of place, and that's so easy to happen with this figure. And it's just a little unfortunate thing, because, once again, it's just a negative. Like, I, I don't want that thing that was holding it down in the box to be on any any of these other figures, because it really plagues Tarbosaurus, like, the actual figure here, in a few ways. Getting a close-up on that eye. Also got some really nice teeth. And unlike, unlike some of the others, the top of his mouth is painted, and so is the back. However, you got this, like, weird bit. Uh, can we take a peek down his throat? There you go. You have that, like, open bit, but it also looks like there's, like, a bit of glue on it. Like, I, I really don't know what that is, actually, and if that's supposed to be anything. It's kind of freaky to be honest. All right guys time for comparisons and I have also just realized this now, but look at this Look at this. I'm just shaking the Albertosaurus and its legs are moving <laughs> And you see when I put it straight up it slopes down so my legs over time and I haven't even used them that much have actually gotten really loose, just like the neck. So, this figure, for me, is just all about loose joints. Can I fix that? Let me know down in the comments below, because it, it, it's really just, it's really getting worse with the Albertosaurus. Like, I originally bought this figure and I thought it was great, I thought it was pretty good. But now, with those loose joints, it's kinda... I'm starting to think, no. But as you can see, Albertosaurus is just way too big. It's like, even if he is a bit smaller, I don't think he's supposed to be that large <laughs> compared to Torbosaurus. Like, Torbosaurus should actually be like... Up here. I say about it up there. And I think he... I think he scales well with the T-Rexes, but that's just because they're ridiculously huge. And speaking of which, here you go with this comparison. T-Rex and Torbosaurus, and Torbosaurus kind of looks small here. Like, he looks a bit smaller than he should. Like, I, I mean, I get it, Torbosaurus was smaller than T-Rex, but I don't think it was quite that small. And while this is an okay comparison, watch this next one. Yes, the Carnotaurus, even in body, is actually higher for... Like, he's actually taller for whatever reason. His legs are longer. Like, this guy looks more proportionate. But, yeah, this, tor this Torbosaurus just doesn't really scale well with these figures. And guys, you know I had to... You know I had to do this, because we have both of the massive biters, so why not bring them both out? So here is the Sarcosuchus, and I, I want to give you guys an update on this guy. The red on, the red, the like reddish brown that he has. Every time I look at this color, I actually like it even more. I don't know what, I don't know what's up with it, but it just looks, it just looks too good. And the only difference between their action features is that this one 
no matter how you do it, the the jaws just won't lock. Well, this one, you see, you, you can actually hear that clicking. So I'd actually say, as far as action feature goes, he is superior than the Tarbosaurus. But every but everything else, I'd probably say Sarcosuchus is easily the better one. So if you can find one of these, one of these guys on like eBay, Amazon, or in, or in stores, get this one. If you had the exact same amount of money and you only could pick one, get this one. This one's just so much better. Monolophosaurus, they're in scale. Like, I believe you could... Yeah, these two, you could definitely use these two. Done. So guys, that is going to be my video on the Torbosaurus. What would I say about it? Well, it's kind of short and stumpy. It's a bit light on detailing, and it's just got quite a few things I don't like about it. But I'm still happy to have it in my collection, because it, it's still a figure that I will display. It's still a figure that I will keep, because it's actually better than the Albertosaurus, which I thought was amazing when I first got it. And I don't think this guy really has anything that's going to, like, not not really go so well in the future. It's like he's got a brilliant head sculpt. I love all the spikes. And the, my only real issues are paint. It's kind of lacking in some places. The feet and the feet look kind. The feet look kind of big, and the legs look kind of small, which is actually really strange. It's a really strange combination. But the paint job is pretty good, and I love the mechanism. Mechanism's really great. So for this guy, I think I think I would give him like a six. Like I I, I was gonna say five, but I think five's a little too harsh. <laughs> Cause in reality, it's it's just his legs and feet. Everything else is wonderfully proportioned. It's just I don't think he sizes that well. Like, with Sarcosuchus, the sizing is pretty okay. Same goes for T-Rex, but no, not with, not with most of your other medium, medium dinosaurs.